I have a hot case that is not getting to temperature. All right, so here's the unit in question, this hot case. We've got a note on it. Let's take some panels off and see what's going on. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna pl unplug the unit. I'm gonna drop the bottom and top panels. Fire up the unit and let's see what's going on. So uh, quite a few screws here, so definitely use, uh, use your screw gun when you're doing this. All right, so we're gonna plug her back in. Gonna turn on. We're gonna do our visual cues. So kind of heard the contactor pulling in there. And I'll try to catch it here on the camera as best as I can. All right, so contactor has pulled in. So that's our first visual sign. That's telling us our safety loop is good. Next, we're gonna turn on our heat switch. And make sure our, all of our cooling axial fans are working. We got a little bit of dust. We'll deal with that later. All the fans are running. That's good. And I notice here the last one set to number 10. So that's kind of hinting us why would they have that one so hot. So there's probably an issue in that section there. But let's start with the bottom elements. So I'm getting three amps. Three amps. And the last element here on the edge. The far left one I'm getting. All right, let's go ahead and test all the top elements now. So we'll start left to right. So element one, we're pulsating 2.3 amps, that's good. Let's move on to element two here. All right, we're getting 2.3 amps, we're pulsing on and off, that's good news. Let's move on to the next element. All right, 2.3 amps, we're pulsing. And we're getting zero amps on this element right here. So second from the right. And let's go test the farthest right element. I uh, can't really get the meter in there. Let me just pick the wire up here. Just gonna use my meter lead. Don't put your hands on wires when it's live. I know it's insulated. You don't know what's cut or what. Yeah, let's not touch wires. Okay, we clamp on 2.3 amps. All right, so let's break down this schematic before we jump into it. So we had a couple visual hints here, okay? Our contactor coil was pulling in. So this guy right here was pulling in. Okay, so what's that telling us? It's telling us this whole circuit here is good, so we can ignore this whole circuit here. All these components are working as far as we know, because we clamped on. So this circuit is complete all the way up to here. And then we can bring in our L2 side, which we'll draw in blue in this whole circuit. is now complete okay so we're gonna go look at our circuit that we were having issues with and the circuit we're having issues with is the upper heater and more specifically uh, RH6 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify our load okay our load is right here the second thing we're gonna do is test for power. So how I'm gonna to choose to test for power is I'm gonna come off of the relay right here, incoming power to the relay, to here. Okay, so we're gonna test here and see if we have 208. 
And then from there, we'll take the next steps. All right, so let's test power into the relay. We have a good 208 volts, so that's good. All right, so we had 208 at the relay, so we can finish drawing our lines here. So that means we have power to this point. And it means we have power to this point right here. Okay, the only way to test this line here would be to go right on the element. Uh, that's not doable. So it is it is possible this line's broken, but that's not really what I'm focused on right now. So my focus is gonna be right here. Is this relay closing? Okay, so is this relay opened or is it closed, letting power flow through? Okay, so how we're gonna go test that is potential difference. So we're gonna test from this point here on the relay to this point here. Okay, zero volts would mean the switch is closed. Potential difference. 208 or anything other than zero volts will tell us the switch is in the open position. All right, so let's go ahead and test across the relay. Let's see if this relay is opened or closed. So we are getting 202 across the relay. The relay is open. All right, so we tested from here to here, okay? And we got 202, so that means this switch is in the open position. This is where we've lost our power, right here, okay? This relay here. So what closes the relay contacts? The coil, okay? So we're gonna go find our coil, which is right here, control six. Okay, and what this does is, it sends DC voltage to our relay coil. And if our relay coil has the correct DC voltage, then those contacts should close. This relay is looking for minimum three volts DC. Okay, I think the range is three volts to 32 volts DC. Anything within that range, these contacts should be closing. So we're gonna go ahead and test these um, the coil of the relay to see if we're getting the correct DC voltage. All right, so you can see the rating there. You gotta look really closely. It's 3.5 volts DC is what we're looking for on the minimum side. So let's set our meter to DC voltage. And let's see if we're getting the correct voltage at this coil. So we're getting five volts DC, we're pulsing. Five volts, four volts, zero volts. Okay, we're pulsing. So we're getting correct voltage. All right, so we are getting the correct voltage here at relay coil. So we're getting the correct voltage at our relay coil. That means this bridge here should be closing. It's staying in the open position. What does that mean? It means the relay is bad. We're getting the correct DC voltage to the coil. The contacts are not doing what they should be. They should be closing. So that means inside the relay, uh, these contacts are not closing. Okay, we should be able to close this circuit. So we need a new relay. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly go over how the voltage should look like. So it should be pulsing like this from zero volts. And if you look closely, you're gonna catch it 174 volts there, so it's pulsing, 200 volts, back to zero. Opening, closing, opening, closing. All right, so let's go ahead and unplug the unit. And last thing I wanna check is to see if this element's bad. The element may have blown the relay. So let's just do a quick ohm test, 88 ohms. That element is good. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean out this uh, unit really quickly, just vacuum out all the dust. All right, we'll go ahead and change this relay out. We'll hit fast forward here. So you wanna make sure you don't cross up the wires. It's DC voltage, all right? So make sure you're taking your picture. In this case, they're color coded, but I still take a picture to make sure. Uh, if you reverse the wires, the relay will not work. So make sure you're keeping that in mind when you're, whenever you're wiring DC voltage. It is polarity sensitive. All right, let's go ahead, fire the unit back up. Let's go test this element. And let's see if she's pulling any amperage. All right, 
So let's clamp on here. And we're getting 2.3 amps. And then we're cycling back down to zero. So the relay is now doing its job correctly. We're getting amp draw. And I'm just going to show you once again what the voltage should look like. So you can see here it's cycling from zero to almost 200 volts. We're pulsing. So zero volts would mean the switch is closed. And I'm just going to show you the DC voltage, how it pulses as well. So that's what's telling the contacts when to open or close. And we'll see here we're getting our 4.5 volts DC. And then we're cycling back down to zero. All right, all that's left now is to cycle the unit off. So it's set to 165. It thinks it's 330 degrees in there, 342. We're really 85 degrees. So we definitely have an issue. So let's just follow this wiring down through for this temperature probe. Probe's a little dirty. That's okay. Let's ohm it out. We're getting 1.095 ohms at 69 Fahrenheit. All right, so let's go check 70 Fahrenheit here on the ohm chart. So at 70 Fahrenheit, I should be getting about 1.08. I'm getting 1.09. So we're kind of within the range. We might be off by like 15 degrees, but as you saw earlier, we were off by like over 200 degrees, somewhere in around there. So that tells me this probe is still good and the problem is the board. Uh, the board's getting the resistance reading. So it should display on the board right now that we're around 75 Fahrenheit and it's displaying that we're actually at 342 Fahrenheit. So we're gonna need a board. So let's get that changed out. All right, so I just fired the unit back up just to see if I missed something earlier, but definitely not. The problem's intermittent. Now it's reading properly. So the board is failing intermittently. And you can see 81 versus 87. So let's get this board changed out. All right, so we'll just hit fast forward here and we'll get the board changed out. All right, so we got the new board in there. We're gonna set our set temp for our lower heat and we're also going to set it for our upper radiant heater. And we're just gonna clamp on now, make sure all three elements are pulling. First one had three amps, second one has three amps. And this last one here that's piggybacked, we're gonna see 6.2 amps on it, 6.3 amps, all good. So now I wanna cycle it off, make sure we're shutting off. So let's wait till we get to set point here. All right, so we're one degree away. Okay, now we're at set point. And you can see we're pulsing, which is fine. So once we go a little bit hotter, it's gonna stop pulsing on that element. So right now we're going uh, three amps, zero amps, three amps, zero amps. I'm waiting for zero amps. So, all right, we stopped pulsing now. So we have zero amps on the middle element. The far right element, we also have zero amps. And finally, the one that was pulsing that we caught is now pulling zero amps. So that means we're shutting off as we should be. So it's showing Last thing I want to do is compare the temp here. So it's showing 162 actual temp, 165. We're off by three degrees. It's all, all right. Good. So as you can see there, it's very important to be thorough in testing the set point. Now, when that upper element was down, I was thinking to myself, there's no way they would shut the whole unit down like this for one element being down, especially a rating one, unless the health inspector came in. Because the call came in overnight, I didn't get all the information, but I can't see a health inspector shutting it down at nighttime. The call would have came in during the day. So I changed that, but everything was checking out. But a good thing I went and I was being thorough and I made sure to check things to set point. And as you can see, that board was failing intermittently. So if I would not have tested at the set point, I would not have caught it. Now the first time when I dropped the panels down, you can see I was getting amp draw. And I actually got lucky because technically it could have worked, got the set point and then failed intermittently later on in the day, which would have looked really bad on me. So I kind of got lucky with that. Uh, really easy troubleshooting there. We just got the ohm chart and it either told us if the probe was bad or the board in this case The board was bad. So let's just move over to DC voltage So we're testing it like any other contact or a relay if we have power at the coil It means the contacts are going to close. So we're going to set our meter to DC voltage and In this case, we're allowed 3 to 32 volts DC So as long as we're getting that voltage even if it's for half a second the contacts will close. So in this case, we're using a relay. The reason why we're using a relay instead of a contactor, if you notice the contacts are constantly opening, closing, opening, closing. If we do that on a contactor, it will burn it out.
Okay, we're pulsating heat. Why we're pulsating heat is because we don't want to go way past the set point. So we're set at 165, or in this case, the upper rating heats were set to number six. Once we get to the desired temperature, we're going to shut off the relay, but then we're going to turn it right back on just so we can maintain temperature. So another thing with DC voltage, you cannot reverse the wires. So you got to make sure that you're checking which wires go where, plus and minus. So you should be checking your wires for everything, but more importantly, on DC voltage, we like to check our wires on three phase units. When we have phase rotation, we want to make sure we're checking our wiring. And then also when we have flame rectification, if we do not have the neutral on the proper side of the circuit, we will not be able to get flame sense back to the module. So those are the three times that I'm really watching and making sure that my wiring goes in the exact spot. And I'm always trying my best to make sure I always put the wire exactly where it goes. But those three specific occasions are really when I'm very mindful and I make sure the wire goes back exactly where I found it.